Hey, I'm Dave. Thanks for checking out this video. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to put together a really detailed, really ornate looking radial pattern inside of Illustrator. These things look really complex, but the skills and techniques that you're gonna to need to build them are all pretty simple. There's no crazy work with the pen tool here. It's just all about repetition and being detail oriented. So follow along with me. I'm gonna show you my workflow on how I put these things together. And hopefully you'll be able to take that and apply it to your own creative projects. Lately, I've been using these as building blocks for more elaborate projects. I've been building a series of radial design based animals. I've also been using these building blocks inside of a deck of playing cards that I think have been looking pretty cool. It's also fun to build these in Illustrator and then take them into After Effects and animate them. They're really complicated. Once you get them moving, they look even more elaborate. So. Let's jump into Illustrator and follow along and see my workflow on how I build these things. Okay, here we are in Illustrator and we're going to start off by creating a new document. So you can go up to File New or you can hit Command N on your keyboard. Pull up the new document window and we're just going to create a 20 inch by 20 inch square. The size is up to you. This is just how I wanted to work on this project today. So we hit create and we're going to get started here by creating guides. I want to keep my guides separate from all my working layers. So the first layer over here we'll call guides and to make sure that I'm centered up with my guides, I'm going to create a square. So I used M on the keyboard to pull up my rectangle tool and I just clicked on the canvas to create this rectangle, which is actually a square. And I'm going to set it up to be the same size as my can canvas, 20 inches by 20 inches, and I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to use the X and Y position up here to make sure that my square is perfectly centered on the canvas. So at 10 inches, that's our center point of our 20 inch by 20 inch canvas. And then I'm going to hit Command R to pull up rulers. And from the top ruler, I'm going to drag out a horizontal guide, and from the side over here I'm going to drag out my vertical guide. I'm just going to make sure that they snap to the center point. That uh, pink text that popped up there is my smart guides. Command U pulls that up for you or you could find it up here in view smart guides. Now we don't need this rectangle or this square in the background anymore so we can delete it and we're going to lock our guide layer to make sure that we're not adding any of our art into the guide layer. Now I'm going to create a new layer and we'll call this center or middle, whatever you want to call it. I like to build these radial patterns in steps. So I'll have a middle layer and then I'll have another layer that I start to build out called like ring one. And then I'll, I'll continue to build that way, locking each layer as I go. And it'll just give me a bit more organization help me troubleshoot the file uh, at later dates, help me animate it if I want to move over to After Effects. Just handy to keep it organized. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to work to the middle of our guides over here. We're going to use the ellipse tool. L on your keyboard, we're to pull that up. Make sure we're on our middle layer and make sure we snap in here to the intersect point of our guides. And holding down Option, which locks your ellipse to the center point, if you didn't hit option when you were creating your ellipse, it would act in this way, but we want it to lock to the center point and build out from there. So option, and then we're gonna create an ellipse that looks something like this. We're gonna go up here to our color palette and turn off the fill. We're gonna make sure that the stroke is black and let's increase the width of the stroke to five points. Now, I don't want this to be an ellipse. I want to bring these um, points here to points. I want them to be pointy, kind of like a petal. So we're gonna use the pen tool, P, to pull that up. And then holding down Option, we can reset these handles. So instead of being that nice, soft, smooth transition, it brings them back to just a corner point. This petal shape here, I wanna rotate several times. So with it selected, press R on the keyboard to pull up your rotate tool. 
find the center point here and option click on it. It's going to bring up your rotate dialog and I want to rotate this by 45 degrees and then I'm going to hit copy. Now if you've watched any of my videos one of my favorite key commands to use is transform again which repeats the last transformation. So command D will repeat that last transformation and if you repeat it twice we get, an, we get an effect that looks like this, which I like. This is very similar to the very first tutorial I posted on YouTube. And uh, I guess we could end this video now. No. Today, I'm gonna take it quite a bit further and create something that looks a lot more elaborate. So let's keep going. L on the keyboard again to pull up our ellipse tool and let's create a circle here in the middle. And I'm just gonna cover up a section in here that I felt looked a little bit rough by creating a thicker stroke. And I wanna scale this down just a touch. Now I'm gonna copy this circle, Command C, Command F, paste it in front, and I'm gonna scale it down. You can create a new circle, but sometimes I'll just copy elements to speed things up. Let's bring our stroke width down for this stroke. I wanna have a bit of variation that moves throughout this project. Copy this, paste it in front, and scale down again. Now I'm gonna create a few little divisions in here. So I'm gonna use my pen tool. I'm gonna to click on this anchor point and I'm gonna create a line that uh, joins those two circles together. The pen tool wants to keep drawing until you close up a path. I'm gonna undo that. The way to let that go is just to switch to a different tool or to deselect the path. So in this case, I'm gonna hit Command Shift A, which deselects everything and I'm left with my pen tool still active. I'm gonna move back to my selection arrow, selection tool, V on the keyboard pulls that up. I'm gonna pick this path up and we're gonna rotate it around our center point again. Let's rotate this by 22 and a half degrees. Hit copy and command D for transform again. There is a bit of a trend emerging here. You will be using these features many times throughout this tutorial. L on the keyboard for circle, and let's make a thicker stroke in here. And then maybe we'll pull up the rectangle tool, M on the keyboard, and we'll make a square. Let's rotate it 45. And on this one here, I don't want it to be stroked, I want it to be filled. So I had my stroke active, I had no fill. Shift X will reverse those. So it's this little symbol up here. It's the swap fill and stroke option, but shift X, the key command gets you there a little bit faster. So that's looking cool. Let's create a circle up here in this pedal. So let's make sure we're aligned to that guide there. Got our circle and then let's rotate this around the center. 45 degrees, sounds good. Lines it up with those pedals and command D, transform again all the way around. We're looking. We're looking sharp there. So one thing, another feature that I like to use sometimes is offset path. So I'm gonna select this shape here and I'm gonna go object path, offset path. And oh, quarter of an inch looks good to me. Now let's make this the lighter stroke weight. And now we're gonna use the scissor tool just to cut a section that's up here. So we find our intersect point here and we're gonna cut and then we can delete the bottom section of that path. This piece up here is looking cool. Let's create a couple little divisions with the pen tool. And then holding option and shift to constrain it. So it slides at 45 and option is dragging out a copy. Let's create a couple copies there. And I'm gonna select all three of these and group them together, command G. You don't need to group all of your stuff together, but by doing it, it makes makes it easier down the, the line. It's the same thing I mentioned with the layers. It just keeps things organized. Now let's reflect this across our middle point here by using the reflect tool. O on the keyboard pulls that up and then option click on our center point that we wanna reflect across. And I wanna reflect across the vertical axis and then hit copy. And you could select both of these sets of lines and group those together. And then we can create a, another line up here like that. And then maybe a couple small circles, 
Shift X to flip the fill and stroke. Option Shift to constrain, drag out some copies, group those, reflect across our center point. And there we go, that's looking pretty cool. So let's grab our dots, grab our lines, all of this element here together, and we're gonna group that the same way that we grouped everything else. And let's rotate this around our center point, 45 degrees and see how that looks. Copy, perfect. Command D to transform again. And I like the look of how this is all coming together. So I want to create a thicker circle that looks like it's tucking in behind these petals here. So I'm going to go back to my center point, find it there, and create my circle holding down shift and option. And I'm going to create a circle that sits about here. It's got quite a thick stroke on it, which I like. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. Now, if I try to do the same trick again with the scissors where I cut it at the intersect point and try to make it look like it's tucked in behind, that technique will not work in this situation. And I'll show you what I mean. If you go and delete this outer stroke here now, the stroke doesn't line, like the ends of the stroke do not line up with the path that you were attempting to tuck it in behind. That only works if the strokes are a similar weight. So there, that would work. Our anchor points are towards the end and they get hidden by well, this one's off a little bit because my cut wasn't perfect. We can tidy that up like so. That's just me being particular because this example is not actually what I'm going to use. Anyway, so we've got this thinner stroke, which looks like it's lined up there. If we have a thicker stroke in here, which is the look I was going for, it's not going to work. So what you need to do is go all the way back to when you had the full circle before you divided it at all. And you would just go object path outline stroke and it creates outlines out of your stroke then you could use the pen tool and create a rough shape that you would use to cut that circle so i'm using my pen tool here and i'm roughly following along where my paths are it's not precise but that's fine because all it's going to be used for is to select this here and then it's used to cut using the intersect option in the pathfinder. Like I said, it's not precise. If you look in preview mode here, or outline mode, part of me, it doesn't line up perfectly, but once everything is on in preview mode, it looks, it looks exactly like what we're looking for. And towards the end of this project, if you wanna outline everything and condense it all into one compound path, it will all become quite neat, but for now, nobody will know that it's messy. So same thing here, let's, let's rotate it around the center point by 45 degrees, hit copy and command D several more times, and there we go. Let's create one last circle before we're done with this layer, find our center point, and somewhere about here. That's looking good to me. So that's our middle completed to a point where I'm happy with it. Let's lock it so that we're not gonna add any more art to it. And then continue working on ring number one. And you just go about the same process, building elements as you see fit. Trying to stay organized, trying to group everything together as you work. A lot of the times I don't really have that much of a plan when I start a project like this. I just do what feels comfortable as I'm moving along. Let's go here, just, uh, okay, I'm gonna show you another trick actually. I wanna create a series of lines that go all the way around and there'll be a lot of them. So to be able to select them and group them can get quite tedious. So one thing that I'll do here when I'm working in a document that's all black like this is I'll intentionally make this stroke an unusual color. So we'll just pick red. And then when we rotate this around our center point, let's say five degrees and hit copy. 
Command D to transform or gain, just hold it down and you'll fly around the outside here quite quickly and you've created a lot of copies. Like I said before, originally you would have had to try and maybe use the lasso tool and select sections like this. And then you get a bunch of other things that you're not looking for. So then you start trying to click each path individually, holding shift to pick up more than one. Again, that takes a long time. So I'm all about trying to speed up processes. This is one thing that I do. I've got my one red path selected and I'm gonna go select same stroke color. I've picked up all my red paths. I can group them together and then I could use my eyedropper to switch them back to black. Now moving forward, all of these individual lines have been grouped, so I don't need to worry about picking them up one by one anymore. So that's a little trick that I use all the time, just thought I'd share with you. Let's create another circle from our center point. And let's make this one this thicker stroke. And let's create some spikes. So I'm gonna find my center point again using the guide. Create a square, and then I'm gonna rotate it by holding shift and constraining it to a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna hit shift X to swap the fill and stroke. And then I'm just gonna pick up this end anchor point with the direct selection tool, A on your keyboard to pull that up. And I'm just gonna delete that. So this path is not closed. It's just an open path with a fill. But in this case, it's all hidden, like I said. So when you move forward and outline everything and condense it all into one compound path, it doesn't matter that this was an open path, it will have the effect that you were looking for. I'm gonna create a lot of them, so I'm gonna do that same trick where I make the fill red for now, rotate around the center, and let's go around 10 degrees. Hit copy. Command D several times to get all those copies. And then we're gonna do the same thing with one of them selected, say select, same fill color, group them together, and then fill them with the black. So that's pretty much it. That's all the techniques that I would use to create one of these radial designs. And you end up just repeating the same steps over and over again. And the idea of this tutorial was not for you to follow along and create the exact same design that I do. It's to pick up the techniques and come up with your own look. So I think I'm gonna leave it at this and let you guys create on your own. If you've stuck around to this point, I'm assuming that you found the video useful and I'd really appreciate it if you do all those things that YouTubers ask for, which is to subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment down below. Anyway guys, really appreciate the support. I'm glad that you checked this one out today and I'm hoping that you found it useful. I'm hoping that you're gonna be able to add this to your design arsenal and come up with some really cool projects from it. So I appreciate all you guys. Thanks a lot for checking it out and uh, we'll see you in the next video, whatever that ends up being. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, peace, have a good one. Perfect.